We've reached the penultimate episode of The Bad Batch titled Flash Strike. I'm still loving the way the music is kicked in immediately with the title credits for these final episodes, just keeping the action going. Clone Force 99 is still on their way to Tantus, attached to a science vessel, while Echo is actually stuck inside of the science vessel. Multiple times we see him tapping into its computer, looking at what appears to be random strings of letters and numbers. My hope is that they're coordinates that he'll somehow be able to send out to Rex and more clones. I think they're going to need a lot of help before this is all over. Because, like I worried last week, their approach isn't exactly stealthy. Their infiltration of the space station above Coruscant was discovered, so the Bad Batch is fully expected by Hemlock and their ship is shot down in the jungle. I love that Omega can hear and feel the laser cannons firing and instantly knows her brothers have found her, which means she needs to get moving on her own escape plans to make their jobs easier. The shuttle crash was exciting, even if jumping out of a ship like that would normally mean instant death. But I don't care, because Rampart's screams were excellent. Shout out to Nashir Dalal, who must have had a blast recording that. His Star Wars roles alone show how much range he's got. While the clones all march towards Tantus, we're reminded of Crosshair's emotional stakes. He deals with hand trimmers as he returns to the last place he ever wanted to see again, but he knows he can't leave Omega behind. This whole season, he has been adamant about not returning to Tantus. He didn't care about saving the other clones, he withheld information because he was afraid, it wasn't until Omega was captured that he decided to fess up. Rampart addresses that with him as well, pointing out that he used to only care about himself, doubting that Crosshair has truly changed. I'm starting to worry that we might be headed towards a Crosshair sacrifice in the finale. Not for Omega, but for all the clones. I, of course, hope he makes it out, but I do think we need to see Crosshair realize that he can't care about just himself, or just his family, or even just other clones. He needs to care about everyone. I think we're seeing a glimpse of that after Rampart does just about everything he possibly can to lose his cool and give away their position to the Empire by waking up a dry axe and then running and screaming through the jungle until he's captured. Crosshair wonders where he is, and I think he might wind up saving Rampart, which has me questioning if Rampart could wind up having a change of heart too. If he's saved by Crosshair, maybe he'll join the Rebellion down the line or something. Meanwhile, Echo swaps his armor out for a TK Trooper disguise and sneaks into the base, popping a droid hand onto his scomp link, which I love. It's awesome seeing him sneak around, pop the hand off, casually download whatever he needs, and then move on. Until he's caught by Emery, that is, who immediately recognizes him. Echo rightly confronts her for her part in the experiments, and her only defense is that she was doing her job, which is basically the scientist version of good soldiers follow orders. It's possible she could have an inhibitor chip just like the rest of the clones, but I also think she has got a severe case of Stockholm Syndrome. In past episodes, she suggested that she was going to be discarded for being different, but Hemlock took her as his assistant instead. In her mind, he saved her life. I've thrown out the idea before that she may have tried and failed to escape him in the past, but just like the Force-sensitive kid Jax, she eventually decided there was no chance at freedom and accepted her role. But now she finally seems ready to break free from her own programming. She offers her help to Echo to save Omega and the other kids, which of course comes as a surprise to him. Their mission has changed yet again. For Omega's part of the story, she recruits the other kids to cover her, install the droids and doctors while she sneaks into the walls of the prison. And they do their best, but they're new to this so everything is plenty tense and had me thinking Dr. Scalder would realize Omega was missing. But the kids do well enough and Omega makes it back after she finds out where the Zillow Beast is being held. Thank goodness they followed up on that. It makes complete sense it would still be in Tantus and they foreshadowed it earlier in the season, but I was still afraid we were going to end the series with people still asking me every week what happened to the Zillow Beast. I think it's clear it will soon be let loose in the base to cause more than enough chaos. I really hope the final episode is nice and long like the series premiere because there's a lot to wrap up. The last three have all been good and fun to watch, but more focused on the action with a dash of character development, which is fine because this season has also had episodes that are the inverse, slower and more focused on character development. These characters have largely reached the end of their emotional journeys, and I trust the writers to deliver a moving conclusion. Series finales always come with huge expectations. I hope the action is as great as it has been 
the past three episodes. I certainly think it'll feel epic with a Zillow beast on the loose, but I also hope it's balanced with solid character moments. And as Star Wars fans, we have questions we would like answered. We haven't seen the CX troopers in a while. What's going on with them? Are we going to get a better look at Project Necromancer? I assume there are Palpatine clones hidden inside the base, but I'd really like to see them. Is there a reason clone commandos seem to be unfazed by the Empire unlike the rest of the clones? Will Rex, Hauser, Gregor, and maybe Wolf join in the assault on Tantus? I hope so. I'm not expecting all of those questions to be answered, and they don't need to be. I think the characters are all set up very well to have great ends to their arcs. I'm sure the action will be rad, and if we toss in a juicy answer or two, I will be perfectly satisfied. We've just got one more week and one more episode to see how it all ends. Until then, let me know what you thought of Flash Strike in the comments. If you haven't already, please like this video, subscribe to the channel, follow us on our socials, and consider checking out our Patreon page. As always, thanks for watching, and may the Force be with you.